In this two-part video, I'll be showing you a folding facade panel system that is uh, applicable to any uh, architectural system. So in the beginning, I'll show you uh, kind of the overall parameters that will drive this facade panel, and then we will use it uh, to model a building facade with uh, multiple panels and randomize the uh, facade parameters for each panel. So before we get to Grasshopper, let me quickly show you what we're going to be building uh, first. So I'm going to show you, um, let's imagine uh, a facade surface. So this is this could be any type of panel that we want to model. And by default, this is two by four. And I'm going to think about a system uh, that is divided in uh, four pieces. So let's think about it. Um, basically as a simple panel system. I can I can actually uh, split this like this, but I can also um, model one and mirror it as well. So imagine this being uh, a four panel system. And what I want to do is create a rotation so that this panel rotates around this point by some degree, let's call it minus 45. And I want this edge to follow this panel's edge so that these two pieces fold simultaneously, right? So this will fold in, uh, in the reverse fashion so that uh, this point will move along this point and this uh, facade panel will fold. So the idea is that um, this type of folding would not change any type of physical attribute of the uh, panel and it will uh, it can just work with rotation and we can control uh, the angle of rotation to drive this sort of panel right so if we want 45 degree angle for the facade panels then we will get a configuration like this so that you can think about these as like shutters uh, in front of a window for instance so um, we're going to first build this idea parametrically and to do that um, I will start by uh, modeling a surface just like the way I did. So let's start with a 4x4 four four fa uh, facade panel like this and initially I'll be modeling the component on this one. So I'm going to first explode it and let's load it into Grasshopper. So in the first part I'll be working on this folding mechanism and then in the second half, we're going to populate it on a larger surface and randomize the appearance. Um, so to begin with, what I need is to get this bottom edge and we can easily extract it by deconstructing the boundary representation, the surface, and we have to go through the edges to find the bottom edge. So I can do list item and get the bottom edge, which is the first index. And I'm going to just hide these geometries for now, hide this one as well. And we just have the line there. I can also um, turn off my uh, world axis so that we can see the line. And then I want to divide the curve into four points so that we get all the points we need. So initially between each of these points, there will be a panel, right? And what I want to do is first out, um, outline all these points uh, because we're going to use them. So let's say uh, that we get, um, we divided them into four points and then I do list item. And I want to get the first item in the list. And since there are four, I, I need a maximum of four indices. So let's start with this side. So this is the first corner and I want to move the second point around this point, right? So I want to find the first, the second point, which is at index one. And then I want to rotate this point around this point. And the way we do that is by using rotation and we can rotate an object in a plane. Now, uh, you can actually do this by default, but I tend to um, use also planes, which makes it uh, highly, uh, uh, highly efficient. So the first thing I do is place a plane on the point of rotation, which is here. And then I want to basically 
input this plane for the plane of rotation. And the geometry I want to rotate is this point, so I feed it into the geometry. And for the angle, uh, we're going to convert some angle to radians, right? So the radians would be, um, let's say we want to rotate it 45 degrees, and I feed in radians. So you can see that uh, the point moved in this direction. We could have also uh, done it this way. So if I if I flip or reverse uh, the grid, it will move on in the other direction. But uh, for now, it, this should be okay. Like we can also do the rotation on this side. Uh, the next point is a bit more trickier because we want this point now. Um, uh, we want, uh, sorry, we want this point to move along this point, right? So that we can, um, we can create some sort of rotation in the opposite direction. And let's see, first, this is kind of folding pretty nicely. And let's actually visualize it by a line. So let's connect these two. And that's the first panel that we want to have with the rotation. And when this point is moving, I want a second point to also rotate with this, right? So th the way we find that second point, uh, we can actually easily do it by rotating the first point along this point, right? So we can rotate it in this direction, in the opposite direction. And um, basically I can do the same operation. So I am going to copy rotate, or you can type in rotate again. And this time I want to rotate the first rotation point and the plane I want to rotate it in uh, would be the plane that is set uh, on the on the rotated point. So it will be on this point. And the angle I want to rotate it is a bit trickier because uh, what we want is um, basically kind of kind of a formulaic relationship with this angle. And that formula happens to be we can actually write it with an evaluation function. It happens to be 180 minus 2 times x, 2 times angle. So if I feed this in, um, we can actually use the angle because I input 180. Then I'm going to convert it into radians again and feed the angle. Now you can see that that point exists on the same line. So if I have zero degree rotation, the panel will be closed. And the more folding I do, that point also moves, right? And uh, we don't want this to be more than 90. So I can set up a higher threshold for this value. So there you go. It's working fine now. And what I need in the last uh, part is to connect this point to the rotated point so that we get the two panel movements in order. Now, when I fold it, you can see that it's now working pretty pretty efficiently, and the rest of the um, uh, the, the rest of the exercise is basically doing it to the other side. Uh, you can easily mirror this using the center point, um, uh, but I would al always recommend you to to build it from scratch. So essentially, what you can do is uh, you can move out uh, the angle and the indices. And all this stuff here, you can just make another copy of it. Uh, basically, we also need to make the copy of the indices because we're going to change them. But the angles can stay consistent. And um, this item, we want it to move to the last index. And this one will move to the third index. And you can see now that this is actually falling in the opposite direction. That's because of the angle of rotation is uh, positive, right? So because we are placing a uh, plane here and rotating it in the counterclockwise direction, the point moves in the opposite direction. And we can easily fix this by uh, multiplying the, the rotation here with a negative value. So I can quickly add a multiplication here. And we can say minus one. And that value can go into the radians. And then this value can also go to the evaluation function. Now you can you can see that um, it actually did, doesn't take too much time to fix these as well. And I'm now controlling both of those with the same uh, input parameter with the angle. And the rest is pretty easy. We can simply feed in all of these lines to a single curve container and extrude these curves 
in the z direction by some amount. So if you remember, the panel sizes were by uh, were four meters tall. So I can just extrude these by four meters. So this controls my height and this controls my angle of rotation. And we want this movement to be restricted between this panel, right? So now you can see that I can control the shutters. So there you have it. This is the first part of the tutorial. And in the second part, we're going to take this logic and apply it on a larger surface and randomize the uh, input parameters.